I don't think we'll take uh, maybe even anywhere near as long as advertised. We'll go as long as uh, as we can. It's amazing. I mean, two days and there's still so many of you here. Uh, it's really a testament to the dedication dedication uh, that uh, so many people have around this issue. Uh, what we thought we'd do is just say, you know, maybe a, just a couple of sort of broad reflections about what we've heard and 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 in these uh, two days. Um, and then open it up for some discussion. Uh, the basic idea here is to have a moment to reflect on what happened here in the yesterday and today, and uh, have a conversation about what's where we're we going from here, and what are the things that uh, we want to prioritize here in North Carolina or elsewhere around the around the country. Uh, so I'll start and say just a few words, and then uh, turn to to Kathy. Uh, you know, uh, it's for, well. First of all, thank you. I mean, it's been uh, fabulous for me. I, uh, you know, I only do these things because uh, selfishly, so that I can learn. So thank you. Uh, it's been really a terrific experience for me. But you know, what I take from this, you know, one is, and I started with this. You know, in these dark times of politics, you know, this is really a hopeful meeting. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be. Pollyannish, but but still, it, you know, considering where we've been, uh, listening to where what is happening, it's just to me, you know, very encouraging. Uh, whether it's the legal challenges that are moving along, whether it's uh, my um, um, math professor colleagues, uh, uh, all of the the citizen activism, all of the citizen interest. Um, uh, the journalist, I mean, th this is sort of a thing in a way that it hasn't been. I know there have been people working on this for a long time. So for, for me, there's a sense of, of, you know, we're getting close to calling this a movement. You know, this is really pretty encouraging. And, I, you know, uh, uh, it's not everyone in the world, but, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there. And the other thing, I mean, I've heard a number of you say this, that you've, and I hope you feel this, and you, you did just now by standing, I mean, it's encouraging to see that there are other people working in this space and, and that uh, we're not alone, you know, that we're, we're all working together. So I hope you, 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 uh, you take that uh, away. I, the other, a couple other themes that I heard a lot, the importance of, of transparency, inclusion, um, of finding ways to engage. Um, and uh, there was some conversation, I think the... the uh, the, the mayor had just said, you know, it's really difficult to get people to show up at meetings, and we often, and this is the experience we've, so many of us have had public hearings of some kind, it's really hard to get people, it's really amazing, people are showing up, and, and, and the numbers that you saw, you know, what you've described in California, what other people have, have been describing, to me, this is really, this is a great story about democracy. I mean, here we, you know, we, 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 we have a problem, we kind of named it. We 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 learn more about it, and when we create these opportunities for actual engagement, yeah. you know, it's not fake; it's real. And by God, people like being citizens. You know, that's really cool. And so I think there's yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Um, I mean, uh, to me, I mean, this is the you know, this is the great lesson of our, you know, the hope for a democracy is that is that somehow, no matter how dark the problem, if we can put a name to it, if we can identify it, if we can, you know, people will engage on it, think about it, tackle it legally, think about it, and that we can come together and mobilize the citizens to push back at it. And so to me, that's the great hope. And I think a lesson about how we move forward is, is, is to maintain that transparency, to, 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 to proceed in ways that will keep people involved that in, in really uh, significant ways. Uh, so to me, that was a lesson. Uh, another had to do with really about the politics of this, about the importance of helping people connect the dots uh, of, of stories of, of you, know, ver you know, very particular. This is just, you know, we're, we're storytelling animals as human beings. That's, what, that's how we make sense of things. That's our favorite way. And it's how we're moved to act. And so the extent to which we can take this sometimes abstract idea of of gerrymandering and translated into actual harms, actual problems, actual, you know, very particular ways. Um, the lessons we got from the activists and the journalists we've heard, it seemed to me there's, there, you know, that, that's always useful to remember, to, to, um, uh, to, uh, to, to bear that in mind, that it's, in the end, as human beings, it, you know, we, it's, 
I try to teach people to think analytically and do statistics. That's part of my job. The, my students hate doing that. They'd rather tell stories. That's because we're wired that way. That's, that's what we like. So to me, that was another thing I heard uh, through the day. Um, so that's all on the, on the positive side. The, the other thing I would say is, is uh, uh, particularly sitting here in North Carolina, not our initiative or not a referendum state, is that we are, as, for all the momentum uh, that we're building, we, we, we ain't there yet. And there's a lot of work to be done. And so we have to, you know, we, we should be encouraged, but we should recognize that there's a lot of work to be done. And, and, and while it, it's absolutely thrilling to hear the stories of success in the states that have ballot initiatives and referenda, I, I think we're still over in the states that don't. And so we can break through there, here in North Carolina or elsewhere, that would be a game changer. Mm -hmm. It will help if we get some, Supreme Court does the right thing. Um, but that, we should also, and that's the last point I wanted to make, is, is, is um, I, I've completely fascinated, loved our panel discussions from the lawyers, learning the inside of, the, I mean, really remarkable to hear the real inside story from these brilliant, clear, wonderful lawyers. Uh, but I think the takeaway is, uh, you know, we can't just leave it to them. And even if we win in the Supreme Court, that it's, you know, there's, there's not going to, the game isn't over. Yeah. And in fact, the game isn't going to be over even if you win these ballot initiatives. Okay. And the game's not going to be over uh, in North Carolina if we get a uh, constitutional amendment because there will still be a redistricting process. There's still the issue of the census. There, there will always be some element of politics. There will always be uh, a, a need for real engagement. And I think the thrust of what we're trying to do, you heard this from, from Tom Ross, is really around let's maximize, let's be really clear about the criteria, let's maximize the transparency, let's figure out how to maximize involvement and engagement of citizens. But that's just an opening for all of us to stay engaged, to stay on top of it, to make sure that people do the right thing. And so that's, those are some of my takeaways. But I have to say, you know, thank you all. Thank all the speakers. It's a really um, fantastic discussion. Uh, and it is ultimately just so encouraging to be with all of you uh, today and yesterday. Yep. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank Fritz and uh, the Paulus uh, Department and uh, Sanford at Duke for hosting this uh, and inviting Common Cause to be a partner um, on this project. I'll just say that this has been a couple of years that we've hosted this uh, together. And so every year, you know, when we first started, we had a little gathering in D.C. and it was about 80 people and we were pretty pleased with ourselves because uh, that was a big crowd in those days. Um, and then uh, a few years later, we had something at Duke and and I think it was around 150 or so because uh, that was uh, yeah. yeah room capacity and and we had to start turning people away and again 150 felt like a lot of people who were interested in redistricting, and then we came back this year and we we broke all records. Um, at at one point we were edging up on 300 and people were still walking in and registering and um, telling us that you know was there going to be a seat at the table and as we've all learned with redistricting as in many things we always have to make a seat for people who want to come to the table. That's right. Um, so I'm going to just leave off with um, maybe a pair of thoughts, a pair of two thoughts. Um, um, you all have the program. There's lots of people who've talked to, um, who have resources who can help you. You are not alone. And so when you've got questions, please feel free to reach out to any of those folks, um, whether that's Common Cause or Brennan Center or Voters Not Politicians or whoever in your own state you want to build a, an alliance with. Um, two things, um, persistence and patience and creativity and coalition. Persistence and patience. I think that I've said this before, redistricting to reform it is a long game. Every once in a while you get lucky with Michigan and you can kind of put a Facebook out there, but you can also be in a situation like Ohio where you have to go to the ballot again and again and again. And if you look at California and you assume that we're an initiative state and we love to pass things, we don't. It took us six times to go to the ballot before we finally won in 2008 and then 2010. 
So we're not the overnight sensation, right? We had to do a lot of garage and wedding um, uh, performances before we finally got to the main stage. Um, so persistence, right? For, for those people who are coming into this space for the first time and you're thinking about this, know that this is a game that's been played by people in power for more than 200 years since the beginning of our, our country's founding. And so to change that, to change that power dynamic takes persistence. Don't give up when somebody says no. Don't give up when somebody says it can't be done. Don't give up when somebody says, where's your money, right? These are things where you can do it when you stick to it, because half of the game is just sticking in that and being persistent. Second, patience. Maybe you've been around for a while, and you think you've heard it all, and you're kind of tired of people coming up with crazy ideas because we just need to focus on the thing that's practical. The patience is the patience to hear people with new ideas, the patience to let those new ideas come in, the patience to take a moment for yourself and think about what you think you know already, but to pause for a second and listen. Because as long as I've been doing this, I heard a lot of new ideas and a lot of new voices too. And I have to give myself the patience not to quickly say I know the answer, but to listen. Creativity. So I'm going to give a shout out to Katie Fahey because A, I love her, mm -hmm. but B, she told me this story. I mean, there's so many stories that come out of Michigan, but one of them was that she was doing a, a presentation that League of Women Voters was hosting along with some other groups, and she went to Target and she found on sale dollar um, little pink salamanders and it was or lizards, and it was perfect because it was kind of like you know, gerrymander. And so after she does her, or maybe before she does her presentation, I'm sorry if I'm screwing up the story, um, she asks, is there anybody in the room who's never heard of the word gerrymander? And this huge room, just like this, only one person raises their hand, and she gives her one of the pink salamanders. Um, and then she proceeds to do her presentation and teach people about, you know, what is gerrymandering and why do we need to change it? Months later, they're on the campaign trail. They've negotiated what they need to negotiate. They've gone to the courts. They fought. They've gotten onto the ballot. You know, they, they're, they're doing all of this. And, and um, she goes to the door, and the woman comes out, and she says, hey, I've got my pink salamander. And she was so proud to tell Katie that she had gathered over 1,000 signatures for a petition. This woman who'd never heard of the word gerrymander gerrymander, um, still had her pink salamander. And that creativity of taking the pink salamander, the flush the toilet little Muppet, right? The uh, gander the, that looks like a duck from Michigan, right? There's so many things. Ohio had a gigantic paper mache Dia de los Muertes um, mask, right? So people got really creative. I think in Pennsylvania, somebody decided to make all the crazy districts out of Legos, right? And, they, and so kids could walk around making these Lego districts. Get creative because this issue is hard until we put our creativity behind it and make it fun. And I'm sure I've only scratched the surface, so you all should just dig deep into your craft drawers and, and your um, horrible puns and come up with whatever makes you laugh, right? That's okay. Nothing is taboo. And the last word is coalition. Oftentimes, as I've said, I've sometimes get into a conversation where, where somebody will say, why don't you just pursue this one idea? And what I'll say is that actually might be the perfect idea. But it's not about me saying I'm going to pursue it. It's about a conversation with a larger group of people, right? We all need to sit down together and say, yeah, that makes sense. Because sometimes it isn't about what the idea is that's so perfect. It's about the fact that we slog through it together. I made you sit on 20 conference calls while we figured out where to put the comma and whether to use if or then. And because we were all in it and we thought hard about what the ramifications were, and I reached out some other crazy people that you would never talk to, and I said, what do you think? And they gamed it out, and they said, oh, well, no, I wouldn't have that because if I had a chance, I would, I would try to game it this way, right? And then let's, let's not finalize it then. Let me reach out to somebody else. Who is not at the table that needs to be at the table, and how do we take the time to talk to them? That coalition. That's the coalition that you need to win. And what I'll say is that you need to have persistence and patience, creativity and coalition to win this. But we've got it all in this room. So just know that when you go out there, you're not alone. 
don't do this alone. Build that big family. Turn to your left and turn to your right and all that. But know that we're all together. This is a movement that we're building. And if we can do it in Michigan, if we can do it in Missouri, if we can do it in Colorado and Utah, for God's sakes, we can do it in North Carolina. We can make that change. We can do that all throughout the US. Hmm. So what we thought we would do is just open the floor for uh, your reflections, uh, your comments, questions that you want to post you know, to the group, uh, things that you wish we had that didn't get covered, points that didn't come out, uh, but just to take a few minutes just to reflect on the, on, the, on the couple of days, and I think we probably still have microphones uh, somewhere. There's uh, so, yes. Uh, hi, I'm Inez Long. I live here in Durham, and I have time and energy to do stuff, and I don't feel like anybody has said, come help me. Mm. I'd like your help. Okay. Um, so what is Table it? in the back to sign yep. up, first of all, but okay. yes, well, that is a good point. That's one, you know, so there. where do I put my time and energy to help with this? Well, there, uh, there may be some people who could answer that still here from Democracy NC or Blueprint or... Uh, yeah. Yes, they're, 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 so make the connection here, absolutely, because there are people who, will, who would love your help and they're engaged, and so yes. you guys meet. And, and by the way, if you're, whether you're from North Carolina or not North Carolina, I know I keep plugging this pledge, um, Part of it is to say, yeah, I care about this issue, but part of it's also just to, to uh, get your zip code so that we know where you're at and we can connect you with the, with the actions and the activists that are happening in that state and you can plug in, right? So it's a, it's a way of sort of making sure that you've got, you can find the family wherever you're going. Yes, sir. Hello, first of all, I'm Bob McClanahan. I've been a litigator right here in Durham for the last 42 years. Very happy to be able to rub elbows with such a great group. But thanks so much to Fritz and Kathy and uh, all the presenters and Common Cause and Polis. A uh, little bit of information uh, that I don't, I didn't hear a lot of information about the other lawsuit that's going on right now in North Carolina courts. Uh, so I've been asking some of the, the folks about this. So anybody who has different information that I'm giving to the people in North Carolina, so I have information and a request for all my fellow North Carolinians and anybody from any other states, take this same tactic home if it helps you. Um, we have a case that was filed last year challenging the state legislative districts uh, in the House and Senate of North Carolina, the General Assembly in Raleigh. Uh, there is going to be a three-judge panel that's going to be hearing this in May. Uh, ultimately, it will be, dis and that's a very favorable uh, panel. It's two Democrats and one Republican, um, Susan, what's the name of the Republican? It's uh, Crosswhite, Judge, thank you. Uh, Judge Crosswhite, actually the Republican, appeared before the General Assembly uh, when they tried to gerrymander the judicial districts a couple of years ago and spoke out against judicial gerrymandering. So we are very hopeful of a favorable outcome in that decision. Of course, that will be ultimately decided by the North Carolina Supreme Court interpreting the North Carolina Constitution as it, as it applies to fair maps, as it applies to free uh, elections, uh, which are required under our Constitution. And as of last night, we're supposed to have a six to one majority of Democrats in our North Carolina State Supreme Court. So, and we're hoping that all of this happens well in time before December, which of course is the filing date for the souped up uh, primary schedule that the legislature has put before us. So we're all very hopeful. So here is my request to all you North Carolinians, uh, particularly those who live in districts represented by Republicans. Please write to your legislators and let them know that they were either going to adopt reason, reform, and redistricting on a nonpartisan basis and create fair maps for the 2020 election of the General Assembly, or let the North Carolina Supreme Court do it for them. So if, if they know this is the uncertainty that we started all this with, this is the motivating factor. The litigation provides the uncertainty for them. 
maybe they will actually get to the uh, to their senses and do it before the court has to do it for them. Thank you very much. I know we have some friends who've come from other states. Um, I think I saw a delegation coming from Mississippi. I'm not going to look directly at you, but I know you're out there. Um, Georgia, um, Florida, Louisiana. Do we have some folks from any of those states, Texas? Thoughts about sort of things that you've learned, observations, questions that you've got on your mind? Any folks? So we, do we have, where'd the mic get to? The folks from Korea. Southern Echo? Well, while you... What, we call you out. Here, All right. here we go. We got a question over here, here, and then I'm, I'm letting Southern Echo brew a little bit so they can think about something they want to share with us. Observations, thoughts. Hi, I'm, <clears throat> I'm Peter Miller. I'm from Oregon, representing Common Cause. Uh, so I, uh, uh, I've been tremendously impressed by, I've learned an enormous amount. I don't, I just came here not knowing much. I still don't know much, but I know more than I did. Um, and uh, one of the things that has struck me, uh, one of the things I think has been going on, why this movement is growing, is that we've been blessed by uh, an administration for the last two years and probably for the next two years that is um, uh, systematically trying to tear down a lot of different aspects of our democracy. And there are a whole lot of people who weren't, didn't think of themselves as patriots who are now standing up and, and uh, talking about the Constitution. And uh, uh, so, I, so we've got a wind at our backs the little luck, it won't last more than about two years before we start fall, uh, falling back. And in Oregon, we have the particular situation of having Democratic supermajorities in both houses, a Democratic governor, and no remarkable history of gerrymandering. This is the time to get, uh, to get a, uh, an independent commission. We have a referendum system, and we'll probably get on the, on the ballot. But uh, in Oregon, our problem is going to be who cares? And what a lot of people have helped teach me here is the importance of organizing, the importance of getting out there in the community. And, um, uh, and I'm, I really appreciate the information that I've received and I'll be trying to call out to some of the people that I've heard here as to what kind of next steps we can do. It's mm -hmm. great, it's great. It's great. Mississippi, Alabama, anybody? We're here. Um, I'm not from Mississippi or, or Alabama. I'm from Colorado. Colorado. Um, <clears throat> but I did want to say I appreciated everything I learned today and over the last couple of days. One of the most powerful sessions for me was the one previous, the racial equity and redistricting conversation and I would really encourage as you move forward and as more people are getting engaged in this issue that that conversation be centered and not a breakout group because I think that everybody in this room would have benefited from those amazing panelists and um, I think that to the point of my colleague from Oregon racial equity is the goal of this country it should be it's a part of our constitution now, and I think that we should not be having any conversations on democracy that don't include racial equity at the center. Yeah. I agree, agree with that, and I, I wish we'd done that, so thank I you. Thank say, you for your comment I, I on that. I do think that all of our panels had folks who were raising and centering that within the conversation, but I think there was also a feeling like we also had to put it in its own special um, space to have time just to talk about that. So, but the, the finding the right balance um, and having enough speakers to, to really kind of bring it both into all of the conference panels, but also a few where we just have the space to talk about issues that sometimes need their own time to brew. Thank you for that. Good. Yes, ma'am. In the back. Uh, hello, Simone Boulding from Arizona, uh, Arizona Coalition for Change. I wanted to just uh, lift up um, 
I feel like a lot of times we talk about this boogeyman that exists maybe on the other side um, or these um, the people who aren't willing to collaborate. And I feel like we spend a lot less time talking about the people who are willing to collaborate or who want to collaborate. Um, and when we look at actually building allyship with people who don't necessarily have the same ideology as us, I feel like we, we, we generally skip about two or three steps. And those two or three steps are really having real conversations um, just based on experiences and what commonalities are. Um, so really having those conversations of what we do have in common um, initially before we're looking at actually being transactional. Um, and so I just wanted to, to lift that perspective up. Thank you. No, I, I think that's so important. Thank you for that. Uh, one of the things we've been doing in North Carolina is, is bringing people together intentionally across the political divide. And we spend a lot of time just getting to know each other, yeah. just talking, yeah. just learning about each other. Because when you get to know someone, it changes things. Yeah. Um, and so thank you for that. Agreed. My name is Susan McClanahan. I have a very quick question. I noticed that you've been videotaping. How can we share this conference with other people via media? OK. Oh, here comes Suzanne. Go ahead. Suzanne, you got an idea? Sure. So um, first of all, Facebook, tweet, take the pledge, then tweet and Facebook that. Um, and the videos will be available on the conference website give us a little bit over a week to make sure that we can get the technology set. Um, we are a small but mighty team, but uh, all of that will be available. Uh, I was just going to uh, go off of what Simone was saying, too, actually. And it's kind of a question for you, Kathy and Fritz. And then if it's appropriate, I would actually suggest that maybe we have it as a table exercise. But I know that for us, a big part of being part of a movement is only possible when people are willing to talk to you and willing to give something as well as you receiving something. I think each of us probably has some reason why we're here and has something to give and also have something that maybe we're looking for. So I think for Common Cause and for Duke, you know, understanding what you guys are looking for and then also understanding what you can give and then if appropriate, uh, maybe we could have a similar conversation at our tables to just talk to each other about that too. That's a great idea. You know, we cognizant of time because I, we promised we would get people out of here and I hate to go over time. I love the suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, How about as we're, as we're um, going through questions, if you've got some thoughts about things that you're looking for or things that you'd like to give, jot it down on a piece of paper, right? Yeah. And um, you can share it with your neighbor or leave it in the center. We will collect them. Put your name and a way to contact you. And we'll try to organize that and really think about how we can do that. And then one day we'll actually have that Slack or the whatever that allows people to do that in a, in a, in a much more organized fashion. But I think it's a great idea. And just to put a point out, we, I would particularly love your feedback on, on, on uh, you know, obviously what happened here, but what we can do at the university. I mean, I've been trying to push the envelope at Duke uh, in terms of doing this kind of thing, which is not what, um, you know, most professors do. Uh, and, uh, you know, I love your thoughts about what, what is useful about that. And frankly, it'd be useful for me to push back at the administration, which doesn't always see this as the most important thing uh, at a university. So your thought, again, in any form, if you you share those thoughts with me about what you found useful, what roles you think we can play here usefully, that would be very helpful. Good. And then um, what we need and what we can give. What we can give, I think, is um, we've got a small team of folks who work on um, redistricting and census. Um, it's Suzanne Almeida, who was standing there with her microphone. It's Dan Vicuña, who's in the back. Um, and uh, Keisha Morris, who I'm not sure if she's, she's somewhere in the room. Um, there she is, um, and, and uh, Alvin Valverde, who folks may have seen when you were checking in. So this small little team, um, what we really try to do is um, when you, when people call us or email us all the time, and they're like, you know what, I've got a group in Oregon, for instance, we're thinking about some language, we're talking with other groups, um, and we're just trying to think about like sort of what do other states do, can you help us think it through? Or in Michigan's case, hey, we've got some tough coalition conversations with folks who are 
a lot of different coalitions who, have di who are not in the same space. And how do we navigate that? And so um, come, we can come in and sort of help to navigate that, right? To find the space to bring people together because ultimately, um, as I say, having a lot of boats um, when you're going up against the Armada is tough if you're not all rowing in the same direction. By the way, can we give that small little team a hand? They're, they're <laughs> really, they're, they're awesome. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm remiss work. because there's also uh, Katie Phillips who's been helping me with these Facebook Lives and making sure that all of this is live tweeted and social networked and um, a couple of other Common Cause folks who deserve a shout out. Um, so the thing that we need from you all is there's a lot of energy in this. And every time I talk to Katie and she tells me somebody was a carpenter and they cut, you know, 5,000 clipboards or somebody knows how to get on the computer and make cute graphics or somebody has the time to do some research or somebody has the time to make some phone calls. That's what we need. Um, and I think thinking about kind of where you are in your state and what, you, what talents you bring, you know, maybe you are a fearless speaker. You talk about a lot of other things. Could I get trained so that I can talk about redistricting? Yes, let's help you do that. Maybe you're not a speaker, but you like hosting things, right? And so I can bring a bunch of people together. Maybe you're, in, you're interested and intrigued by this mapping software, but you're not sure that you're ready to take it on. Could I help to host a webinar of a bunch of people and then bring some, can you help me bring some people in to talk about you know, what's possible and let's, let's collaborate. So that's what I'm looking for is offers of collaboration. Um, and then please do take a moment, write a little, write something on a piece of paper, leave it for us, um, and we'll collect it after this and, and try to really feed that into a, a way that we can create a support system for each other. Why don't we take um, a couple of more uh, comments, questions, uh, interventions, um, uh, and then we'll leave some for the next conference. I think there's a question all the way in the back. I want to make sure that we get some of those. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, maybe, I don't know where the microphones have gone to, but there's one over here. Gate, Otto Cat, Leonard Gorman from the Navajo Nation. Um, as you may wonder, where the heck is that? <laughs> You're all familiar with the Four Corners area. Yes, Navajo Nation is situated there. I'd like to take up the invitation that you offered, uh, Professor Meyer. <clears throat> um, I may be the only indigenous person in this conference at the moment. Uh, but we do have an expert from the university here that we constantly employ in these redistricting activities, uh, Professor Ingstrom. I believe he's nearing his retirement. Now, it would be wonderful for Duke University to host <coughs> indigenous um, redistricting activities as it, as it relates to um, the United Nations declarations on the rights of indigenous peoples and how that is a part of the cornerstone in the That's preservation. better for you because Fritz is about to go to University of Denver, oh, a little bit closer to, to where you might be in the yeah, corner. Yeah. So. And closer to Professor um, yeah. Anaya uh, at the law school. Yeah, could be. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. now you've given it away. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Did I blow something? <laughs> Not at all. All right. Um, but maybe, maybe our, our next trip is out to the Four Corners. Thank you. Hey, my name is Ria Taswell. Um, just want to share a couple quick thoughts in terms of next steps. Uh, I work with People for the American Way, and I work very closely with the uh, great folks in the Common Cause office in D.C. to organize a coalition of national, state, and local groups that are working to advance democracy reforms. It's called the Declaration for American Democracy. It currently is comprised of over 130 different organizations that have banded together to work on voting rights, uh, anti-corruption ethics reform, uh, and campaign finance reform. And one of the um, solutions that we're focused on is redistricting. Uh, currently, we're very much focused on HR1 and getting that passed through the House, the For the People Act. But we're also working with many uh, state and local allies to identify campaigns that we can mobilize our millions of members. Collectively, there's tens of millions of members. We're talking about the move-ons of the world, the Daily Coast, public citizens, uh, many groups that have members all across the country. And we regularly coordinate to uh, plug people into various initiatives. We uh, helped um, channel people into some of the uh, state ballot initiatives that were talked about at this conference. Would love to just keep in touch 
and uh, be made aware of any efforts that are happening in your state or even locally, just so that we can flag that for the broader coalition and uh, potentially plug people into events, petition organizing, or collecting, uh, really anything you need. We're here to help. Uh, can just people find that. you? You can just go to declarationforamericandemocracy.org. We'd love to have you sign up and get on our um, listserv as well. I'm Jennifer Bremer with the League of Women Voters, and um, uh, we're always looking for volunteers. So uh, anyone, um, especially people from outside the metro areas, because we really are prioritizing trying to work into the rural areas. Uh, but I also wanted to say for those of you who are still interested in more conferencing, um, that um, there's an event that, uh, given all the talk about the census, I, I haven't heard that mentioned, and people may not be aware of it, Ca the Carolina Counts, which is the uh, North Carolina uh, you know, consortium working on the, one of them anyway, working on the census as having an all-day event on uh, Thursday, um, January 31st. So this Thursday, um, at the McKimmon Center you know, on the North Carolina State Campus. Mm -hmm. So that's a good opportunity to learn more about the census and see who all's working on that and, and, and see, um, see what can be done. Um, and if people want a little information on that six. event, so where would they find it? Um, they should. Carolina Counts has a website. Carolina Counts. So the, um, a. Philip Randolph Institute is also perfect. Randolph perfect. Either okay. one of those uh, websites. Very good. Great. Okay. Thank you. Maybe. One, one more question. My, my name is Chris Hudson. I'm from Charlotte. I, I'm an attorney there, uh, interested in the issue. Uh, we've, we've heard from uh, all the folks uh, who've had these new uh, successes around the country with, uh, with uh, anti-gerrymandering legislation and uh, here in North Carolina I'm sure it's not that different uh, at base that uh, uh, we've got these uh, you had them in in Colorado you had them in Michigan I'm sure folks that that are so uh, enamored of their own power uh, in the legislature and elsewhere that they uh, they're not they don't see the uh, self benefit or benefit to to their constituents, uh, to the extent they worry about that, to uh, to give up that power, that power to draw districts to their own desires. What what if any uh, specific tactics did you have in uh, uh, that were successful in uh, in getting folks, maybe with a rural constituency, uh, the Phil Burgers and the. Uh, Tim Moore's of the uh, of the world; uh, the, those are our House Speaker and uh, and Senate President here in North Carolina. Uh, to get them where it, uh, they saw it uh, to become uh, in their own interest to uh, to make these changes. Uh, we we have a, a, a worthwhile history in North Carolina for one thing to tell them about, but uh, everybody's memory is pretty short. Uh, North Carolina, as everyone has been pointed out more than once, uh, was a Democrat-controlled General Assembly and drawing the, the maps that way for 140 years, plus or minus 50, a uh, long time. Anyway, specific tactics from other states that have been successful in making it happen and getting your, uh, your power wielders to be less uh, selfish about their power. We, we probably don't have too enough time to go sort of in-depth from other states. I see, Bob, are you, were you looking to respond to that in terms of what you guys are doing on this? Or I can very briefly. I mean, we're the people who've been working on this and maybe not been so successful of late, but um, a lot of the tactics can be if folks know people have friends and family and the areas where the majority party members live, it's basically trying to connect with the rank and file and get those folks to talk to the leadership. It's talking to the leadership. Any of us can. Anybody from North Carolina, we're all citizen lobbyists. That's important to do so. Sort of what Tom Ross and all of us have been mentioning, the uncertainty, talking to them about you don't know what may happen in the ele next election. This is the time to, to you know push reform. And the main thing, and I was going to say this, particularly for those who are in North Carolina, Everybody here is a citizen lobbyist, and we really do need your help. And it's a uh, common cause, Democracy North Carolina, the League of Women Voters. Uh, all of us are trying to collectively push the needle. And as I said earlier, and kind of going back to it, there will be 
redistricting reform bills that will be filed, uh, the lawmakers come back January 30th, I guess this coming week, that's the easy part. The hard part is getting them again to hear these bills. So any kind of pressure, any kind of messaging you all can do to your own legislators, to the leadership, and that is let the debate happen. Mm -hmm. That's the thing we need to push. And again, come to our websites, commoncausenc.org, Democracy North Carolina, the League of Women Voters. We're all in this together, and we would welcome you all's help. I think that's a perfect note to end on. Let's give everyone a round of applause. And if, if, if I could very quickly just uh, specifically thank my staff uh, who did a tremendous amount of work to make this happen. I don't, I don't even see, BJ, are you still here in the back? I'm in the back. BJ Riddell, um, who's done a tremendous, um, uh, just a tremendous amount on logistics. And Joel Luther, who is in the back. Thank you very much, I'll BJ and I'll give a shout Joel. out to Jane Pinsky and the guy behind the camera is Brian Warner. So thank you. Uh, lots and lots of people who've made this happen behind the scenes. Yeah. Take care, you all. Take and, care. Uh, hope you didn't miss too much of the game.